The seasonal mastery for Classic World of Warcraft has just had a Q40 hit the PTR. Notably on the blue post, they say, assured uh -huh. that overcoming their master's true form will require a mathematically impossible level of determination and skill. More likely a nod towards Ian's old wait, wait, one second. impossible. They assured that overcoming their master's true form will require a mathematically impossible level of determination and skill. More like so they're making a Q like the way it used to be whenever the game originally came out. That's cool. I think they should have done that for the original classic. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's great. I mean, the thing is that the problem is that like Season of Mastery did half of it right, but the other half of it wasn't right. We're like, we wanted harder raids in Classic WoW. Like for sure. Like that was cool. But we also want better rewards. I, I don't want to go and do a fucking like buffed up Chromagus just to get the same chromatic boots. I want to get like the chromatic boots of attack speed and it makes me attack 10 percent faster or something like that you know i, I want to have cooler shit it's the same that's why poe works is because every season they introduce some crazy new item that makes you even more powerful likely a nod towards ian's old post rather than the actual difficulty of the raid nevertheless yeah. it'll be interesting to see what they do at this point in time the population in seasonal mastery has been following suits with what has happened on pretty much every single vanilla private server that we've ever seen it has a very strong start with loads of players hitting up the fresh it continues well into molten core and blackwing lure yeah we start to see a fall off around aq40 and then comparatively there's few left by nax ramus to my knowledge this is just the standard formula of how a vanilla server goes through its life cycle so it's, it's not the it, it's got nothing to do with the game like the thing is it really doesn't it has nothing to do with the game the reason why that happens is that every patch only adds content mainly i mean like you have a few things like zg that adds content for level players but like if for example you're level 43 it doesn't matter to you if the next patch comes out it's got nothing to do with you. Like, who cares? Like, it's not really going to affect your life one way or another. So, like, that's one of the big differences that I have with uh, with the game is I think that, and this is the same problem that, like, WoW has, like, Retail WoW has, is that almost all of their content patches are focused around, like, high-end competitive players. And that's one of the good things I saw with, like, Lost Ark with, like, their lower on event is that they were trying to add more content that wasn't just more super hard raids, but it was things that players can just do out in the world, like different events and things like that. That's what, that's what the game needs more of. The game needs more events and things like that that change the casual player's experience. And, and that's why you lose people over time is because all of the updates are only targeting the top players. So, like, yeah, for the top 10% or 20% of people that raid, of course they stay because they're getting new content. But the 80% that don't raid, they don't get new content. Is this a failure or is it just the game running what is its natural course? Mm -hmm. By the time Season Mastery 2 rolls around, assuming it does, Blizzard yeah. should be under new management as well from Microsoft. And whilst this hardly guarantees they're about to throw dollars at making something new, it's better than anything we have at the moment as well if you have hopes for the future, that's for sure. Either way, with two major content phases left, Blizzard must be considering for Season of Mastery. Was this worth it? How have the overall changes been received? What's gone well? what hasn't gone well and the biggest question of all should we do this again and should anything be different the second time around today we'll cover the good the bad and the gray area i'll play the new season of mastery whenever it comes out for probably like the first day right because it's always cool like even whenever this is the same thing with like any mmo this is why i've always said right like the first few days of a brand new mmo are always super fucking fun, man. Like, it's like you've got a bunch of people, like, playing. You've got everybody. Like, everything's popping off. It's great. I love that. But, like, what's really the difference is that, like, after that, what happens? Like, people falling off is what the issue is. Brand new. Yeah, it's a brand new server. Brand new people you're interacting with. Yeah, it's the same world. Sure. But, like, I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. It's just a, it's just a reset. 1.2x is not enough. Yeah. It's just that I'm not going to stick around and play Classic WoW because the leveling takes too long. Like, and also, like, whenever I get to max level, I have to spend too much time doing prep, and the raids aren't rewarding enough for me to want to do the prep. That's fundamentally what it is. Like, I don't want to have to farm gold or farm resources out. Like, it just takes too much time. Like, I just don't want to do it. 
Uh, I just wish you would... T I, I wish that Classic WoW, like, some of the design decisions and some of the cool things about the game were in, and then they took out a lot of the time wasters. ...with Seas of Mastery, now that we've seen Blizzard's vanilla progress more than one time over, as well yeah. as a few of my lofty hopes for a run back for a seasonal server. So the good with Seasonal Mastery, there was plenty of it, fortunately. Boosting has been completely solved due to the targeted changes in dungeons, whereby yeah. after a period of time, mobs will gain extra speed and CC immunity, and you just can't kite them back and forth endlessly with Blizzard anymore. This on top of them recalculating the formula for mob tagging and reduced XP when with higher level players. This whole package has made boosting a thing of the past. The experience boost, I must admit, when Seasonal Mastery they did was a good job first announced, this. I was quite skeptical of the idea yeah. of an XP boost within the game. I've always thought that the leveling experience had been quite a big part of it, but as the server gradually progresses, it makes sense to have measures in place to allow newer or returning players to catch up and be able to hop into the end game content sooner rather than later. In fact, at this moment in time, bonus XP is sitting at 100% and you get bonus gold for quests too. Mount cost. I just I don't want to do like I don't want to wait. I want to be able to play it at the beginning. I, I I'm not a fan of the like oh we're gonna buff it later. Like I I want it to be buffed on release because that way I I can actually like play through the game naturally and not have to wait because like I don't want to feel like I'm behind. You know like I I started in like AQ or something like that and like oh now everything's doubled. Well I mean who cares? Like I I want to do it now. Uh, yeah I just I want to I want to start whenever everybody else starts zooming through the leveling yeah i mean basically i mean not really zooming through it but like it's just really tedious man it's really fucking tedious that's why everybody bought mage boosts it's like you think about like let's take a step back why is everybody buying mage boosting because the leveling's tedious as fuck. That's what it is. It takes forever. Reduction also went into You're this. Just grinding the same mob faster, over and over in a quest mob. Of the course, I'm just 40, drop. so mount should be cheaper. That was a good bit of foresight there. The profession changes have been good, given the increased cadence as well. Mm -hmm. There's more nodes out in the world. Elemental, fire, and earth, and so on can now drop from mining and herbing nodes. Black yeah. lotus work the way that they do in TBC, where they can also drop from high level nodes. And alchemists get extra procs when they're at maximum level. The black rock depths pickpocketing change whilst a bit annoying for the average player has stopped bots from being able to farm in there anywhere near as efficiently dire wall and all its surrounding content as well as sunken temple class yep. quests from day one gave players much more variety in gearing the tier 0.5 quest line on day one as well is quite powerful i think it's borderline okay though we've only yeah, yeah i mean sure someone says sounds like retail is really your game i i, I think retail wow is great in a lot of ways yeah i, I do I, I have no problem being a retail randy yeah, I, I think Retail WoW is great in, in a ton of ways. That's why I log in and I play the game a lot. Like, I, I haven't been playing recently because I've been, like, going in on Lost Ark a lot. But, like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to play Retail WoW. I find that Retail WoW is way more fun than Classic or TBC. It, it's way more fulfilling. It's way more interesting to me. I just think it's 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 better. That's all there is to it. Yeah, it's just, it's just a better game. I've, there's more stuff to do. Like I, I would play, I would play classic more, but like, remember whenever I made the tweet about all the changes that I want in season of mastery and none of them happened except for like one. And that was it. Like, I don't want to play the same game again. I want to play a different game. Like if they do a season of mastery too, go all out, go like go balls to the wall, man. So they're going to do new season of mastery. I think they will. Yeah. I, I, I expect so. Absolutely. Classic soy raid. What is this? Is Nick raiding me? Oh shit! Yo, oh, thank you, thank you, Nick. I appreciate that, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. May I want to address this to the Spurgs? This is personal opinion, Lamau. Well, of course, it's a personal opinion. Like I, I think that retail WoW in a lot of ways like has objectively more things to do. It a hundred percent does. Like there's just more things that you can do as a player. Yo, what's up, Nick? I was actually telling them uh, if Nick's in chat. I was telling them about how you and Rich were talking to me about that plus 16 weapon. That's crazy, isn't it? That pl plus 16 weapon. Man, we really gonna have, like, we really gotta come together. Yeah, we really gotta come together, buy, buy some of those items. Season 4 is actually looking good as fuck. Yeah, I'm unironically, like, a, a retail player. Like, Classic WoW, it's just, it's just too slow and boring. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. There are some really good things about the game, though, to be fair.
one class really seeing significant benefits. Raid updates have gone down overall well, I would say, in creating a new challenge, and yeah. the removal of world buffs alongside that allows the developers to put something in the game where they can have a reasonable measure of how powerful players will be. Blizzard initially started off the That's season true. wanting it's to, to be quite scarce. This didn't pan out. It turns out people like the purple items, so they increase the frequency of loot. So there are definitely a lot of good things. Yeah. There have been some bad things as well, though. Despite it being easier to get consumables, harder raids still make it very heavy cost-wise to remain fully buffed. Well, exactly, because it's counterbalanced. Like, yeah, it's easier to get consumables, but you need more consumables. So it's like, okay, is it really saving you time? I don't know. You see kind of what I'm saying? Yeah, like you're investing a lot of time into it and you have to use even more consumables because the raids take longer and they're harder. No class diversity at all. It's the exact same copy paste meta as classic. Warriors are kings in terms of DPS and tanking. Hybrids are all healers. Yep. You know how it looks now. Pretty much everything about PvP. The same class meta as classic once again because no changes. The epic PvP gear from rank 12 and above being available from day one is just too powerful. On top it was too good. Like I remember people had like, because the thing is, like, why are you going to struggle and slog through a buffed Molten Core to get an item that has strength and spirit on it whenever all you have to do is sit in a battleground and pre-made against randos that are probably in greens and get full gear? Like, why the fuck would you do- like, why the fuck would you do that? For this doubled RP and decay means you still need to do the insane amount of hours to hit a for high experience? rank just yeah, for a right. smaller period of time overall. It's not a healthy system, something should have been done about it for this mm -hmm. season. Yeah. There were too many servers at launch and we still don't have any PvE to PvP transfer options. This could go for TVC as well at this point. That's not In that many people Blizzard playing, didn't holy allow shit. This because leveling on PvE is easy and you don't need to worry about any other players, whilst PvP was seen as a much more difficult and harsh environment. These days, however, yeah. it's just sort of a restriction, and I don't think that many people are really getting an ego about leveling to 60 on a PvP server anymore. Blizzard could have considered more- Yeah, that used to be what it was, is like people would, uh, they, they would level, or sorry, like, they wouldn't let you transfer from PvE to PvP because leveling on a PvP server was harder to do, which like kind of makes sense, like it, it does. Especially in Classic WoW, like you would get killed all the time, but at the same time, it's just also frustrating. Yeah, I think that the problem really, like, that's only a big problem because people can't, uh, uh, there's not enough people on the server, so people can't find groups. Like, if you had more people playing, it wouldn't be an issue support for the hardcore playstyle. The Soul of Iron buff was good and the community really took the idea and ran with it, but it didn't work out so well on regular servers. Hardcore players had to compete with normal players for quests when they would yeah. ordinarily group because it makes sense to do, causing a bit of friction between the two. Players would also find a number of inventive ways to grief hardcore players through the likes of Infernals, trying to get people to right click them by accident. It was pretty memey and made for some funny clips early on, but it got <laughs> old pretty fast. Soul yeah. of Iron layer on servers where they play there and upon death they revert to a regular character on the server. It might be dead content within the space of a month, but at least hardcore players will be able to self-regulate grief attempts through everyone carrying an equal risk when flagged. And then there are grey areas. I would say these are features of classic which definitely exist. These are a number of the flaws of the game which go alongside all of okay. the things which also make it good. Reserving item as a culture when running dungeons and the tank scarcity at end game level dungeons. Oh, reserving items are people still crying about that oh my god how are people still crying about using an item or, or sorry reserving an item this is just nuts man it's so annoying i don't get why i don't get why people complain about that it's like if you want to join a group and they have an item reserved just don't join the group it's that simple yeah it's just it's fucking reserved and that's all there is to it so long as it's agreed upon beforehand. Yes, exactly. You, yes, it needs to be uh, stated ahead of time. You can't just be like, you, th there's a, su there are surprise reserves, right? And like, there's another word for that. But yeah, I think overall it's fine. And uh, it's because it's hyper prevalent and hard to avoid. It's not. Well, if you don't like that, then make your own group. Yeah, just make your own group then. If you don't like that, there's somebody reserving an item. Just make your own group. It's not hard. How do you think they're doing it? Like, that's what it is. Yeah, don't join the group. Just don't play. Same mentality.
the thing is like just don't play just like the thing is like whenever you want people to play the game around the way that you play the game i i think that there needs to be like a really logical reason for that you know what i mean says mr streamer i i why do people say that i, I said i did, said the same shit whenever i didn't stream like i said the same shit listen it's just these babies that want to have people make groups for them and then want to make rules for other people that are putting in extra work if somebody wants to reserve the item then let them do that like what are you gonna i i hate telling i hate trying to micromanage what people do like this is your own you're voluntarily joining into the group how's it a problem make your own group reserve your own items become a hypocrite yeah just do whatever you want yeah it's people that like oh well i don't like this so the game needs to change the entire thing no maybe just don't worry about it don't join groups they don't get it yeah but, well they don't they're entitled that's it they're entitled because they want everybody else to play the game the same way that they do man yeah that's all there is to it which only ever gets exponentially worse the longer the expansion goes on how many times have you tried to run a dungeon you have one or two items that you need in mind but yep. you cannot find a run without them being reserved it just happens again and again make Not your sure own what run. The solution would be but it's kind of unfortunate that dungeons die out so fast having a dual spec now this is also a hot topic in tbc as well it seems people yeah i'm not gonna play i'm not gonna I, like i play wrath i think wrath has dual spec i'm not gonna play t i'm not gonna play fucking this bullshit if they don't have dual spec there's no reason to like yeah yeah i, I mean i just like why the fuck would i want to uh why, why the fuck would i want to play the game without dual spec like i, I don't want to spend 50 gold to respec why that's a waste of fucking time that's a waste of my money, dude. That's a waste of your money because I'm not, I'm not farming that shit. Fuck that. I get it from chat, but I still feel stupid spending it. Yeah. You get free gold anyway? Yeah, I do, but like, I could spend it on something else. I don't have to spend it on that bullshit. Fuck that. We really cannot wait for this to be part of the game. Personally, I wouldn't be against if there was a one-time cost from your class trainer where yeah. you can input a second set of talents and then you have to go back to your trainer to activate them or have the Chronoboon displaced to be used as a consumable gold sink to actually change spec. So there's still some kind of ongoing cost associated with it. That's Action balance, as per usual, isn't very good. And now that the widespread yeah, player is. base has begun to understand how powerful paladins are for PvE and PvP content, the majority of players are choosing alliance this time around is there anything you can do about factions or is this just part of the game tier sets which are only relevant if that for one spec per class should there be a tier set for each spec specifically if this happened to you yeah i think so uh, i think what they should do so like i think they should give like a, a rep paladin they should give rep paladins like crusader strike give moonkins better mana regen i uh, give a bunch of people different stuff for like the next season of mastery like give warriors like I, I don't know may, let them like be able to charge in combat or something maybe that's too much I don't know I'd have to really think about it but like just give classes like new tools and new abilities to play with to make the experience different give their uh, give them like tier set tokens for every single raid and then you can trade it in for set pieces that change the way that your play style is like yeah like that's what I really want to see a whole fucking lot man charge in combat if it roots maybe I don't know yet but like what I'm saying, this spirit sat proc on chance like it was supposed to. Season Mastery Classic with TVC skill trees. Yeah, I, I think that the thing is, I, I feel like like Vanilla WoW had a lot of really, really good things. But I really feel like TBC is just a better game. Like especially for end game, I feel like TBC is just an infinitely better game. And I would actually wish that Blizzard built off of tbc rather than building off of vanilla the only thing that i liked more about vanilla is like to be honest i liked 40 man rates i like the easy casual 40 man rates it's just the truth uh, i thought it was just a better social experience sets would need to be considerably easier to get hold of otherwise you'd be waiting forever mm -hmm. but it's just an idea having both ranking and pre mates together is an extremely efficient way to filter every single casual player from pvp in a really short space of time yeah the only thing that casuals are going to run is alteric valley well pvp is just kind of dead content maybe this is a symptom of mmos as a larger scale you look at tbc where they increase the amount of honor given from towers and people are just pinging back and forth between horde and alliance the exact same people just don't give a shit like they don't give a shit like the thing is that you can't design this is a big problem that i think a lot of developers have is they design a game based off of what worked in the past and players are completely different 
than what they used to be in 2006. The way people consume content is different. The way people approach goals is different. Everything is fucking different. And I think that's really what the issue is, is that you have to understand that players are looking at it through a new lens and then develop content through that lens. Thing happened in Season of Mastery with the Eastern Plague Land Towers. People aren't PvPing, they're just using them to maximize efficiency and gains. Yeah. But there's definitely a lot of lessons to be taken from Season of Mastery so far, but for the second one, what would I like to see? Well, something with a bit of a different focus from just raiding content. Here's how I think of it, man. Season of Mastery 1 fucking sucked dick, nobody played it. Why don't you just throw everything at the wall, see what shit sticks, and go with that? Hey, you got nothing to lose. Well, you have 10,000 people playing, 20,000 people playing the game. Stop focusing on raids. Yeah, stop thinking about the raids. Who gives a fuck about the raids? Oh, Chromagus is harder? Who cares? It doesn't matter. I want to see some better content for leveling. I want to see better quests, better experiences, etc. Ban the stair spammers? Yeah, I might do that. It's annoying. It's weird. I, I don't like the... It, as soon as there's an emote that is, uh, that's overused, it's too much. And something along the lines of Season of Discovery with class focused updates. Shift up the established meta in PvP and PvE. And very importantly, yeah, exactly. at least for me, change the meta. Classic classes work with their current design, not just try to shoehorn in a later game version of what they do. I've seen plenty yeah. of comments to try TBC talents in a future season. It feels the exact same as when people were talking about a seasonal server and saying, oh, just add Karazhan or Mount Hyjal or any of this other content, which in the end is just TBC content. If we did have TBC talents, would they solve things? Yeah, no. absolutely they would, but there'd be a set of unfinished talents where we would miss 10 levels from what no, we- No, pe because people would, uh... Uh, it would just cause new problems. You, you're just you're just replacing the, the the new problem with the old problem. Like you need to have a new different version of the of the talents. Like you need to redesign them and make something better. Because there's a lot of talents in, in like classic WoW that are just dead talents. They're garbage. Like nobody uses this talent for anything. Uh, like I, I can't think of any like right off the top of my head. Like it improved rend. Like, nobody uses Rend. Nobody cares about Rend. The only t I think you need improved Rend to get Impale. I, I don't remember. But, like, nobody else would use that. It's just... It, it, it's pointless. Like, why Like why is this even in the game? Just get rid of it or change it. ...were intended to be. And I feel like this TP would kind of Rose. show the longer we went on. Yeah, but well, you don't need though, improved we don't have Rend for that. that TBC adds to synergize with them either. Think of it like this instead. Say, let's take Enhancement Shaman in Classic, for example. So what does the class and spec do? There are two-hand DPS, or they have a one-hander and a shield. We have some tank talents in the mix. That's a bit interesting. They deal both physical and magic damage, and they have strong party-wide buffs. So those ideas are what we need to preserve and try and make work. We want them to be a two-hand DPS and potentially a tank. I think Enhancement yeah. already achieves party-wide buffs very well. Two-hand DPS has mana issues and just, well, it doesn't do any DPS, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a problem. What if now you can pick two weapon imbues instead of one through a talent, and when you Storm Strike, it activates different buffs depending on your imbue. So Flame Tongue changes your physical damage to fire for 10 seconds, and Wind Fury activates Mega Wind Fury that hits four times when it procs for 10 seconds. That'd be cool. That's one hand and shield, the sort of tank vibe they have going on. Yeah, I, I just, I want to see some new shit, man. Like, I'm just tired of, uh, I'm tired of, of seeing the same, it's like the same meta, the same content. It's just the same, the same, the same. It's like you have to just add in new, new content. Like, Season of Mastery was just like, it just died in like three days, basically. And like, I remember even like watching the world first, like Ragnaros Hardcore or whatever. Like, not even a lot of people gave a shit about it. Like, it was kind of cool, but it was also just like, okay, great. Like, now we did this. It's just slow. Like, if they want to invest, like, in my opinion, I would love to see Blizzard, like, invest a lot more time into something like uh, like developing a OSRS route of the game. I think that would be great. And I think actually, like, because one of the problems that retail has is they just have so much stuff in the game. There's just simply so much stuff in the game that it's overwhelming for a player. There's no mount that feels unique or special because there's 500 mounts that feel unique or special. So, like, nobody really gets to stand out and nobody really gets to, um, what's the word for it? They really get to move on. You know what I mean? Like, you can't sit in, in Shatrath 
and you don't have that ashes of Alar that everybody can look at. Do you see what I'm saying? A lot of retail feels out of place now too? Yeah, I would say so. What stuff? Um, Like, I mean, a, a million transmogs, a million pets, a million mounts. There's just too much. There's simply too much. Have you ever looked at Ken and thought, man, I wish I could wield a totem like that? Well, why not? Why shouldn't you be able to? Instead of your Earth totem being a quest item you get at level 4 and that sits in your bag for the rest of your existence, you yeah. undergo a quest to carve that into a living shield which you actually wear in your offhand, which massively increases your armor and threat generation. And then when you storm strike with this offhand on, which is tank focused, it applies debuffs that a tank needs like Demo Shout or Thunderclap or Sunder. Well, versions of them which fit in line with the Shaman a little bit better. Of course, if they did go down this route, balance would be an absolute fiesta. But let's be honest, out of- It already is. It already is a fiesta. Balance already is garbage in the game. Just make it garbage in a new way. POE balance is garbage too. Every league, there's some build that can tank Cirrus clouds and one-shot Cirrus at the same time. Every single time. And there's like 50 other builds that can't fucking do that. But there's always going to be something that's better. That's just the way it goes. Minions? Well, not minions. Probably not for tanking serious clubs. I don't know. Maybe not. PoE's most imbalanced game ever. And it doesn't fucking matter. You see what I'm saying? It doesn't fucking matter. But you need to invest a lot. That's true. You do. Absolutely. Every version of WoW I have ever played, Classic has by far the worst class balance across the board. And at the end of the day, it's a full yeah. fun seasonal server. It's already It fucked. is what it is. Those were just two examples that I came up with. The yeah, look, look at this. Look at this. It's like this, the balance, like, I mean, to me, I mean, this seems pretty much, this seems pretty much fine. I think everything's pretty much in order here. You guys can assume what's down there at the bottom, the pink one and the, the, the brown one druids and paladins right of course yeah perfectly balanced yeah this this seems fine to me as well however um you know the, the truth is like yeah it's funny to meme around on this shit but like it sucks if you're playing a feral druid and your damage is garbage or, or you're playing a priest and your damage is garbage or you're playing a paladin and your damage is garbage like this is not fun it's not fun to just suck so just make make new classes suck just change it up just like hey we're gonna do this crazy thing and if it doesn't work well we'll just pot fix it or something yeah just do some crazy shit it is what it is those were just two examples that i came up with the point would be to try and make changes to bring in new or returning people who want to play classic they want to play a druid but they don't want to feel as though they need to put on a blue dress and press healing touch rank seven for a year straight exactly. which yeah. i think we can Sucks. all understand Nevertheless, let me know how you think Raph and TBC did World that way better. Has gone so far. What would bring? Uh, I think honestly, like Retail Wild does a relatively good job at making all the classes semi viable. Like if you look at the damage breakdowns for like Retail Wow and you compare it to like TBC or you compare it to Wrath or especially Vanilla Wow, like they, it's it's way better now. It is way 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 fucking better back next season and the only the only reason why every class is is viable in classic wow and i don't know how relevant this is in season of mastery but it's because the classic wow raids were so easy it doesn't matter what you bring it's you're going to clear the raid anyway so like that was always the logic behind it it's like well everything's balanced because none of it matters do you like class changes to rebalance things or something else entirely as always thank you all so much for watching and listening in and i shall see you all in the next one very soon Comp really doesn't matter. Comp does matter, but it doesn't matter as much as it used to. That's what I'm saying. I'm going to link the video. This is a new Willy video. It just came out, I guess, what is it, a day ago? And so uh, Willy's Classic Wild content creator. He does videos about other stuff, too. You guys know all about Willy.